had a bad week. Good evening, my lovelies. I must say, you all look good enough to eat. <laughs> it is I, your lord and vampire savior love game, or PD1 Piranha if you prefer. And we're back with one of the most non-threatening characters in all of Darkstalkers, Felicia. That's just her name. No surname or anything, just Felicia. And again, we're doing her playthroughs of both Vampire Hunter and Vampire Savior. As is customary. As you'll see for this part, I'm kind of just cutting through most of this for the sake of uh, not showing things that have already been shown. But you know how it'd be. It's just how it is. So a primer on Felicia. Well, she's obviously a cat girl. The cat girl race in the Darkstalkers slash Capcom verse is interesting because there are no males. Like, male humans can breed with cat girls, but only female cat girls are ever born. There are no such things as, like, cat men or anything in that sense. At least not yet. And they have the ability to turn into straight up, like, regular photorealistic uh, cats. They have that power as well. It's interesting. Obviously, like, an interesting take on the typical cat girl. Because even if you haven't actually watched anime or been into that before, you know what a cat girl is at the very least. Probably you do. I would have to go out on a limb and say, you know what the hell a cat girl is, because you've seen them in, like, any sort of, uh. Let's just say certain kinds of media, whether it be SFW or otherwise. Obviously, Felicia is borderline naked, so she's kind of shoehorned into that role, but regardless of that personality-wise, she's actually one of the most wholesome characters. Like, she's not at all a seductress or anything to that degree. And unlike Morrigan, who... I should make a quick addendum here that Morrigan... I mentioned before in the first video that, like, yes, she is ultimately a hero. Depending on which publication you're looking at, because there are some Darkstalkers media that just make her a straight-up villain, or at the very least an anti-villain. The general idea with Morrigan is that she acts upon whatever is most convenient for her, so she's almost a more neutral character in that sense. But more often than not, she has fought on the side of good more so than evil, so that's why I said that she, for the most part, is an anti-hero, but for the most part, she just does, like, what will benefit her the most. So, in certain things, like the comics and whatnot, she has done a few unsavoring, unsavory things, but anyway, back to Felicia. As you can see, Felicia can become a regular cat. She is a traveling, aspiring pop star of sorts. Kind of like an idol, if you were to give her some kind of Japanese connotation, but she's actually American. Her nationality is more in line with the US of A. In fact, her stage in this game is the USA stage by default, so... She is the default kind of... American character in this game, if you will. Her playstyle is a lot more focused on rushdown. Her specials are a lot of fun to use, but she doesn't really have a true projectile. She has like a little ball she can chase after, and then she also has that kind of... I call it the litter box kick, where you can kind of kick up a little dust of uh... Like that right there. And that little sand kick thing. It's interesting. It's not... If it's in Vampire Savior, I don't know how to do it, because I don't think it's in that game. I couldn't find it in the move list, so I'm gonna guess it's not in Vampire Savior. It's in Marvel 2, though, interestingly enough. As you can see in this game, she was drawn a bit more monstrously. It wasn't until the third game that she got her full-on characterization as what she actually is, which again is like kind of a aspiring 
touring pop star just wanting to make people happy. Like, she is a genuinely heroic, wholesome character and, like, unabashedly fights for the side of good. Um... She doesn't have, like, a particular relationship with Morgan that I know of. Um, her most prominent relationship is that of John Talbain, who... Kind of the cat and dog, the classic cat and dog relationship there, but... Felicia and John Talbain are both, like, unabashedly hero characters, but... Felicia is more of a conscientious objector. She wants to solve the problems without fighting and such, whereas John Talbain believes the only way to oust evil from the world is to just kill whatever the source of it is. So they kind of find themselves at odds in that sense, but eventually come to terms with each other, thinking that maybe both of their ideals are right in one way or the other. Because sometimes you do have to fight, but... Perhaps a non-violent option would at least be worth a try. As uh, Obi-Wan once said, there are alternatives to fighting. But yeah, she is a... Obviously a very energetic, very cutesy kind of character, but... Always, you know, takes what she's doing seriously. And is, like, surprisingly smart, given her disposition. I think she also has, like, some interaction with Lord Raptor, because they're both musicians. Although, they, they couldn't be, like, possibly more opposite. <laughs> but yeah, she is a ton of fun, overall. Just because she's very quick, very rushed-down, kind of jump-in heavy character. As you can see, one of her attacks is a total, like, spin-dash kind of thing, leading into an uppercut. I did better with her than I did with Morgan, except against uh, Lord Raptor. Like, I cut out all my losses against Lord Raptor, because he's ridiculously... Like, I would say he's one of Felicia's worst mashups, in this game anyway. Oh yeah, I didn't get to mention it, but uh, if you saw earlier I was fighting like this samurai-looking guy called Bishamon. His playstyle is really interesting because a good Bishamon player knows how to run the timer out. Like, even if you can't take your health bar all the way down, he will get an easy lead on you and then just run the timer out like nobody's business. So like, a good Bishamon player competitively will completely fuck you over by running the time out as much as you possibly can. It's quite glorious to behold. Here you can see my uh, hate fueled into Hoitzel here. I hate the fact that he can totally cancel whatever you're doing to do that fucking magnet grab thing. Because like even when you're in the middle of an actual attack, he'll just say fuck that and grab you anyways. Keep in mind, this is just kind of like this is just the uh, default difficulty. This is not like super hard, super easy, or anything. You can change the difficulty in the in the uh, the menu if you want to. This is just kind of like the whatever the hell the game comes. I think it's like four stars or something like that. So it is what it is. But yeah, once again, just like with Morgan, I totally destroyed Pyron on my first try right here. I just fucked him up beyond recognition. It's funny, because I can actually play him pretty good in this game. I was decent with him in both, uh... In the PSP game and this game, so... It's kind of funny how I can just fuck him up like this. Also, yes, there is slight desync here, because... For some reason, the original file here kinda decided to shit itself and go to a black screen, so I had to, like, redo the whole thing, so... Apologies for the slight desync, but it is what it is. You can still see me just fuck this guy up, so it's a lot of fun. 
Yeah, her special... Like, every single one of those cat girls she calls in has a name. Like, they're all their own characters, which kind of, It's very similar... Like... Darkstalkers is almost... How do I say this? You could draw a lot of parallels between it and Blaze Blue. And uh, Tao Kaka's finisher is a lot like that. She calls in a lot of her like buddies from the from the Kaka clan. Anyways, there was uh, Felicia in Night Warriors. But yeah, funny enough, Felicia and Tao Kaka were the subjects of one of the earliest uh, death battle videos back on the Screw Attack channel back in the day. It was quite something. I do enjoy that every character in this game has their own victory theme, kind of like Smash Bros, because a lot of fighting games don't have that, so it's nice to, to see. And again, you get a cool ending sprite here. Yeah, it's, it's like... She's weird to think about, because obviously she's primarily naked, but... She's not a seductive character at all, like, she's actually very wholesome. As a matter of fact, it's revealed in this game that she's more or less, in addition to being, like, this singing idol person, she's also kind of a nun. So, she, like, opens this orphanage to, to take care of kids and whatnot, so... She's a very... Genuinely caring person. Also, if you saw that there, she has... She's the only character in this game that has a move that just charges her meter. It's weird. I don't know why she has that, but... but yeah, I played a lot of her in Marvel 2. I tried to play her more in Marvel 3. She's not... I can't get into her Marvel 3 playstyle for some reason, which is weird, because I can play Morgan just fine, but... Marvel 3 Felicia is just not my uh, style at all. Yeah. I was so disappointed too because I'm like, oh my god, Felicia's in this game again, that's fucking awesome, but I just could not play her well. I'm sure there's someone that can play her pretty good, but that someone is not me at all. And like, as for my, like, uh... What's the word? Subjective opinion on Felicia? It's kind of hard for me to say, because, like, on one hand, I do, I, like, cat girls have always been something of, like, a point of contention for me, because, obviously, I love cats, I do, I, I like her design from, like, an aesthetic standpoint, and I like playing as her, but... Cat girls are an odd one for me, like, any kind of... Like, obviously I don't like furries in the traditional sense in any way, but people like this, like, obviously all she has are, like, ears and a tail, really, and, like, big hands, so she's still mostly human, so it's not that bad, but it's been a very conflicting thing for me, like, in Fire Emblem and this game and all of that, because I can never quite get past the stigma that... How do I put this nicely? That cat girls and these, like, sort of borderline furry characters aren't the most hygienic? Maybe that's just me. I always, like, had that in my head, even though, like, cats also like to clean themselves a lot, so I could be totally wrong about that, but I'm not dissing Felicia by saying that. I'm just saying... That is my general opinion when it comes to, like, most... Most of those look kind of like borderline furry characters, like, uh, the, whatever the fuck the species is in Fire Emblem, the Tag Well, and the, uh... What the fuck are they even called? There's Tag Well and something else. There's, like, a lot of different, uh, kind of animal species, but, again, maybe that's just me. But yeah, Felicia is a super cool, wholesome character that 
does her best. She's not the strongest Darkstalker, but... She is certainly a force to be reckoned with. And if she gets mad, you don't want to fuck with her, basically. Yeah, she was a ton of fun in, uh, what do you call it, Marvel 2. She had kind of a, a mix of her Darkstalkers 2 and 3 moveset, so it was kind of like a lot of fun to just play her with a mix of other characters. But if you like kind of a rushdown quick character like that, then Felicia will definitely be the choice for you, because she goes all in, most definitely. And... Just when you thought I could escape her for one fucking video... Here she comes again. I promise you Lilith is not the final boss of every character in this game, but... Here she is for Felicia. With totally different dialogue, by the way, which is kind of cool. This kind of reminds me of uh, the side... Or the, um, the second part of Speed Highway in Sonic Adventure. You know what's funny is, as of recording this, speaking of which, uh, me and John did a... like a, a long-ass recording of uh, Sonic Adventure 2, but he didn't have the like recording properly... He didn't have his desktop audio recording, so the whole thing was scrapped. So that was a waste of time, but... It was what it was. But yeah, this is yet again the final boss. You get to see Lilith naked again there, which is a lot of fun. Um, what else to say about Felicia? I mean... I know she was, like, originally she was supposed to have Morrigan's personality, so she was supposed to be more like the, uh, kind of temptress character. There's her Dark Force, by the way, where a little, um, one of her friends comes in and just kind of does basic attacks. And there's Luminous Illusion, which she totally mashed out right there. Don't try to deny that. <laughs> Speaking of mashing out, there you go. But yeah, like I was saying, she ends up creating a or an orphanage. Yeah, if it's not Morgan that's in one of the crossover games, it's definitely Felicia. Just because... I mean, she's popular for a reason, obviously. The funniest part about it was that she was, uh, she had cat ears, like, put on her in the American cartoon, but uh, aside from that, that'll be the end for part two, and, uh, join me next time.